Welcome to the Darlington Southern 500. You're listening to Into the Smoke, hosted by Patrick Harmon. And welcome back, guys, to another episode of Into the Smoke. I'm your host, Patrick Harmon. So, uh, yeah, we are at the throwback race at Darlington Motor Speedway. I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Should have looked that up, I guess. So, um, we got a lot of news coming at you guys. Um, not a lot of news. A lot of news. It's just a big story, guys. So if you guys weren't following IndyCar before, um, I guess this wouldn't really make you guys follow IndyCar, but it's it's a it's a pretty big story for y'all, guys. So um, this happened a few weeks ago. It was um, I, I, I totally forgot to check this out. It was the same weekend that um, I'm pretty sure it was literally. And I will look at that right now for y'all. So, um, it was a pretty, um, it was not that long ago. Uh, we're looking at it right now. It was, uh, do, 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 do. It was Bristol Motor Speedway, um, not Bristol Motor Speedway. Okay, okay, guys. We're already, um, going, we're already going off track. It was August I believe August 19th August 19th um is when this incident happened it was at Pocono Motor Speedway and it was during the Verizon IndyCar series if you guys don't know what I'm talking about you will got you will pretty soon and I lost my mouse already this is live guys you guys aren't hearing it live but I, I, I want to do that stuff eventually. Man, I really did lose my mouse. Oh, well, guys. I really did. I don't want to screw everything up, but... I really did lose... Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I lost my mouse for a second, guys. Oh, well. This is live, so... I want to be... I want to be transparent with you guys, so I want to do things. I don't want to, like, cut things out. I think that kind of, like, screws up things. But anyway, guys... This was, I believe, August 19th, I thought that was then. Yeah. yeah okay, we're going to go back again, again, again. August, I believe it was August 19th. It was back when, um, yep, it was August, I believe, August 19th. Um, at Pocono Motor Speed, Pocono, um, Pocono, um, at the Tricky Triangle, um, with the Verizon IndyCar Series. Like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you will pretty soon. Um, Robert Wickens for Schmidt. Um, he races for Schmidt. Um, Peterson Motorsports was involved in a very serious accident there. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it was right after the Saturday race. It was on on the Sunday. Um, IndyCar sometimes does that. They'll um, they'll see. I don't I don't know if they actually do it like accordingly or they'll like I don't know how they do that but Indy, uh, IndyCar sometimes does that they'll, they'll see uh, they'll, they'll um, I think it's I think it's accordingly a little bit they'll, they'll kind of they'll, they'll see that and um, NASCAR will do a race on Saturday so they'll race on Sunday um, but anyway um, it was a pretty bad wreck um, he hit, uh, he hit, he hit the catch fence. I, that's what I call it. It's the fence that goes along, um, the spectators. And, um, I, I just want to, uh, put this up front. Th these cars are basically, um, front and rear independent suspensions. Have you ever, if you, I, I, it's called a Prowler. Um, I don't know, uh, it's, uh, Chrysler made them. They're, uh. They're called prowlers. I don't know if there's a Christ. It's called a Chrysler Prowler or Puma Pro. I I forget what the the thing, but it was a Chrysler product at the time, and um they had a f independent front suspension. Well, this th these vehicles are front and rear independent front suspension, and the driver basically the race car driver basically sits in the shell. Well, what happened was he got hit just ever so slightly. Because these vehicles, especially if you guys were watching Indy, the Indy, um, Indy qualifying 
at the Indianapolis 500, uh, was it two years ago now or something like that? And you could definitely see that these cars are definitely totally different than just, like, it's just like any other racing series. They always tweak these cars just enough that they're totally different than every other year. So, he got hit just to the point. It just, he went up to the catch fence and literally every other Every other component on that vehicle, other than just the shell of where he was sitting in, was gone. You literally, if you, I would just look up um, Robert Wickens, and it would, it, it will show you the video. Google search Robert, Robert, Robert Wickens, and and you'll you'll see the you'll see the video, but. It's just, you will definitely, like, it'll just scare you because these cars aren't like NASCAR cars. Like, if you guys saw the, um, um, Eric, Eric Almarola video of NASCAR, like, um, Eric Almarola accident, it's totally different than that accident. It was definitely different than that accident. Um, it was definitely different. Because Eric Almarola's accident, um, it was fiery and all that stuff, and, like, you saw the spring... Like kind of pop out, and then you saw his. Um, oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> I kind of saw that that made a small noise, but you kind of saw that his rear end smacked the ground. And you knew that hurt, but that was totally different than what Robert Wickens experienced. Like it was on the next level, and you and this will kind of this this is what kind of hurts me now. Um. He is now in the hospital. I do not. I did not look this up. I believe he is still at Pocono. I believe he's still in po in a Pocono hospital. Uh, Pocono is um, on the East Coast by New York and all those areas like um, Bo Boston and stuff like that. Boston. You always have to say Boston and stuff like that. You can't. You can't always say Boston and then throw it off with a couple of other Boston accents. I'm sorry, guys. Um, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, Buffalo is over here, too. He's a co-host. He won't talk very much, but Buffalo's over here, too. Buffalo's over here, too. He's a co-host tonight. Um, but, um, this is what scares me the most. Um, I did not know this before um, getting the notes, show notes ready for the show. Um, he was actually on um, uh, medical assistance for breathing. He could actually not talk to his family until, I'm guessing, today. So, that is what, that just brings this whole situation, like, the real, the for real. Um, he had a spinal cord injury, and he had um, other foot, like, ortho orthopedic injuries. That could be anywhere from a broken leg like he had plenty, like he had injuries like and he's still getting surgeries and all that stuff it's just really serious guys he's he's going to obviously be out for the rest of this year um I know they only have two more races for the, this year and then they go back in March I'm definitely thinking he's not going to be back the first part of the year like I don't know if he's going to want to go back to racing I understand everybody's got racing in their blood but it's just I would well, I would definitely look at racing different. I'd be like, um, will that car wreck again? <laughs> I would de I would definitely be looking at it different, you know. And I understand NASCAR and Indy cars are different, and um, sports car racing is different, and every single racing is different. But at the same time, guys, the 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 injuries you can get are different but the outcome of the injuries are the same you know you can still have long-term effects and he's definitely gonna have long-term effects of this guys you know spinal cord injuries could end up being paralyzation um, like foot injuries could even mean that you can't even drive a regular car anymore you can't even drive yourself to places you know um, you can't even do simple things like walk around and all that stuff you know and from Driving a vehicle 
one day, driving a race car to one day, to being in a hospital and not even being to live by yourself is kind of scary, you know. Um, I don't know. It just got real, you know. I, I feel I feel really bad. I, I feel really bad, and um, just um, whatever you guys uh, do, just kind of think of racing a lot different. And you really do. Um, I I know that. I know like drivers kind of like say that. Like I know, I know like people. Um, what was it? I saw. Um, I know there's a video floating around that uh, uh, Kyle Busch kind of hater fought somebody, and then they turned that around to say that. Um, okay, I'll tell you. I'll I'll back up the story a little bit. I was gonna. I was gonna. Okay. So Kyle Busch hater found Kyle Busch at like a post race signing you that actually it was actually at Bristol <laughs> to, to be exact actually guys so it was the night before this wreck so um so it was uh he was doing a signing event after a race and this guy was I think he was kind of aggressing uh being the aggressor before the uh before the fight he was kind of like hey Kyle Bush blah 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 I want to fight and Kyle Bush was kind of pushing off because he's not gonna fight some random person for no reason you know, that's for off-track events, you know, after you piss somebody off. But, he, um, he, um, I guess he kind of, like, just shut up, dude. Just shut up. You're drunk or something like that. Um, the video is, like most videos, they're not going to show you very much. So, if you do find the video, it's probably going to be very grainy. It's going to be very, um, it's going to be very, um, um, bad in quality and all that stuff. But, it was basically a video... And then he ends up, um, I think he ends up striking his chest even. It's not even a full-blown, like, nose or eye punch or anything like that. And, um, security ends up, uh, track security comes up and p picks, them, picks them both up. I'm pretty sure they both say, like, um, like, I don't think, I, they might say sorry. I don't know, but, you know, and then these, um, two YouTubers turn around, make it, tur they turn them, turn it kind of around and they make it sound like, oh, it's like these people want to like fight people because that's what they see on the track. It's like I don't know. Like I see, I, I see this in two different ways. I see a drunk person. I, let's say I just see it in one way though. I really see it as a drunk person being stupid. You know, I would never go up and just say, "You want to fight me, Kyle Bush?" No. But, at the same time, I am going to boo him. You know why? Because he's really not a good driver. He makes me mad as a, as a fan because he doesn't race people the same way. And then when he does race somebody, you know, he, you know, he's, you know, but that don't, doesn't make it right to punch somebody. I'm not going to punch somebody, you know. And he, this, the person that was making the video was kind of construing to the point that, this is what drive. This, this is what people are doing. You know, it's not. You know, this is a isolated incident. I guess it happened twice now to Kyle Busch or another driver. He didn't. I don't think he really said. But it's not what actual people are doing. You know, booing is not. You know, what I mean, disrespecting the sport. You know, I don't understand why people don't understand that booing and. Or other things like that, like booing or going to Twitter and saying, "Oh, you're a bad driver. You're this. You're that." That's not disrespecting the sport. You're getting mad at the driver for a specific thing. That's still not saying that your what you're doing is very dangerous. You know, you're still not saying that specific thing. You're just booing. You're like, "You're a bad driver. You're this. You're that." It's not saying that. Yes, this is a very d dangerous thing. You know, everybody knows that, you know, it's a very dangerous, whatever you do over 100 miles an hour is dangerous. Just like, um, if you guys, I know I'm getting really off tra track now, but if you ever, if you guys ever heard of, um, Street Speed 717, he thinks what he does is safe. He drives a sports car. He has a McLaren. He has a, um, he used to have a Camaro, or, or not Camaro, he used to have a Corvette. Um, so he had a uh, McLaren, a Corvette, and he has a truck even. He's never, I don't think he's ever raced the truck more than like 100 miles an hour. He's always joked about that. Oh, I don't, can't get this truck too fast. But he's raced a McLaren and a Corvette before. 
hundreds over 100 miles. Like, it's probably like, oh, he probably got both of them pretty close to the 200 mark. And he said he's raced both of them very clean. No, you haven't, dude. NASCAR racing is a lot more safe than what the, what what um what people do on the st street, you know. And um I don't know. I think that's just my little rant for, about that. But um any racing is dangerous. But with the right precautions, it can be less dangerous. Just like that's why we have all the safety crew that they have, you know, they have fire I mean, they have ambulances. They have hospitals, literally right on the amp, right on the track. And if you can't get, if they don't have that, they have literally they hire medical staff to look. They have a helicopter on staff, so you can literally helicopter straight to a hospital, literally not even a few miles away. You know, so okay, that's my rant, though, guys. Like I'm just saying, you know, NASCAR isn't the hundred percent safe, but you know, it's a Oh, I saver than some guy saying, "Oh, I can drive my McLaren 220 miles an hour down the highway." That's not safe, though, dude. Like, I've just never understood. I do want to do a video eventually, like a podcast or something like that, about how um, street racing is not safe by any terms, um, because this guy thinks it is. But that's an uh, that's a that's a topic for another day, guys. It just kind of irritates me that people think that street racing is st safe. He said, he said, and that's kind of his exact words. He said, it's safe because I watch my surroundings. Dude, you don't know your surroundings because it could be, you know, some random person. You know I mean? Some random person could be driving the side of the road, you know, or somebody could be drunk. You know, you can't control that. But, you know, that happens and, you know, you could hurt somebody and ultimately that's still your decision. You know? But... Sorry, that's my rant, guys. Um, so, um, just think about Robert uh, Robert Wickens um, and Schmidt um, Peterson Motorsports. Um, he's got a very, very long time and a hard, very long time and a hard road of recovery to go. Um, like I said, he it's been about two weeks, I think, now, and he's just off of. Um, breathing um um supports so and it's not fun you know i i haven't been on that i knew somebody that was on like you know i mean icu and it's not fun so he needs to um he needs to have he needs to have everybody he can in his in thoughts so um just um, and I see the other thing too. Um, just a real quick thing is that I don't think that certain that that s s a certain situation can be avoided within IndyCar because that's how Indy cars are set up: is the front, the front and rear independent suspension. And if something like that could happen again, it will. You know, because he hit the catch fence, it ripped up his whole entire vehicle, and all that was left was the the shell of his where he sits in so I don't think it could be avoided guys you know that's kind of the pro you know it's kind of like if, if you guys could picture like like driving in your own vehicle and watching the worst wreck happen and then like they, they that's basically what they do is watch they they've seen these wrecks happen before and then they're like they basically ask themselves so do you want to race this vehicle then? And they basically say yes. Just like if it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like watching those crash dummies, like. <laughs> but instead of them actually surviving, it's like, boom, psh, like e no airbags deploy. It's I shouldn't joke about this, but it's kind of like watching uh, like it's kind of like watching like those crash dummies, and instead of all the airbag like everything working correct. Both the air, like both the crash dummies, are like on the ground, like like getting CPR and like n like ambulances are all around, like trying and like the crash dummies are like flatlined, like everybody's like, do you want to drive this car now? It's like that's basically what they get asked, 
every single race. You know, do you want to race this vehicle? Like, the crash dummies didn't work. Are you the crash dummy? And that's kind of what race car drivers do every single day, guys. You know, that's, and, you know, that's what, that's kind of what race car drivers do every single day in a very more serious way, though, guys. It's not very, it's not in a joking matter, guys. I know that for sure. It's, you know, it shouldn't be, I just, I can't say it in a, because it's, it, it, to me, I can't think of it, I can't think of it in a serious question, like, oh, do you see, <laughs> like, you know, it's not, it, you can't think of, like, you can't, it's kind of like brings in your fight, uh, um, I know people kind of joke about this too, like, people can't, like, talk about this seriously, but it's kind of brings in your fight or flight, um, thing, and a lot of, like, I don't know if drivers have this, but it's kind of that fight or flight thing. Um, I know um, when I was in high school, um, one of my teachers were kind of talking about this. But um, it's called the fight or flight um, thing um, in your body. And everybody has it in some... Yeah, my dog's being goofy right now. He's trying to chew on anything he can find. Buffalo is on um, assignment right now. And the assignment is definitely not what we put him on. We'll say that for sure. But um but the fight or flight is kinda like it um it means fight, like you wanna do whatever is put in front of you. So basically do you wanna now Buffalo is definitely on assignment, but he does doesn't wanna do the assignment. <laughs> but um the the fight is like you wanna do whatever is in front of you right now. Or the flight is get out of there. Like, oh, I don't want to do. I don't want to do it. We're just done. And basically, that's what drivers are. I feel like that's what the drivers are doing every single second they're driving. Most people are like in it once in a while, but drivers are probably doing it every single second. They're like, don't want to do this. Don't want to. Kind of like um that Bubba Wallace incident at um what was that i think that was at um michigan wasn't that pretty sure that was at michigan yeah i think that was at michigan guys either it was it was either at michigan or pocono when bubba was going straight and he his um his caliber just straight up through the um Straight up through the, um, some brake part just went straight up through the, um, straight up through the, um, the hood. But anyway, guys, um, um, in other news, um, so, again, I'll, I'll say this again, um, just keep, uh, keep, uh, just think about Robert Wickens and Schmidt, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, Peterson Motorsports and the whole Verizon IndyCar series, um, in your, um, um, in your, um, mind, and we're going to IndyCar, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but we're going to, um, not IndyCar, we're going to Indy and Apples Motor Speedway in a couple weeks, so keep the, uh, we're, we'll, we'll go to, uh, we'll go to Indy and Apples, and we'll, we'll race one for, um, I don't know if the, um, somebody will, I'm, 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 if I was going to Indianapolis, I would race, um, I, and I won, I would dedicate the race, but that's just me. I would, I would definitely dedicate the race to Robert Wiggins, but, but that was just, that would just be me. But anyway, guys, some good news from Goodyear. <laughs> Got you guys there. Um, Goodyear is making some sweet rain tires for, for Charlotte, the Charlotte Roval. If you guys um go to the um go to the um picture on the um um go go to the picture over there on um NASCAR's website, those are some sweet rain tires. There's some like they're actually real tires, supposedly. I don't know if they're actually doing them that way. Um if you guys ever seen the um dirt tires for the um they're actually like for the um for uh Eldora for the truck series. They're even better than Eldora tires. They're actually real tires that have real rain, pa like real tire pattern. Um, so I don't know if they're actually ra running those or they're making some other. They look like real tires, like actual tires that you buy from the store. 
So I don't know if you can buy NASCAR tires. Will th will they actually run a tire and then sell them? Because like the the um, Eldora tires are basically like a oval tire, dirt oval tire. But um, I was wondering if that means that they'll run um um they'll be running um um wipers. Um, well, two things. I was wondering if they're going to actually run in the rain, or does that mean that they'll... Because they're not going to be able to dry the whole track. But, they, um, um, so I'm wondering if they're just going to dry, dry certain parts of it, the, so they'll, they'll, red, they'll red flag it, or they'll yellow flag it. See, there's going to be two things that they might do. They'll yellow flag it. There th well, actually, three things. One, they'll just run the, run the race, and just race it to the um they will um what you say um they they uh two they might yellow flag it and then dry the uh straightaways and possibly the um okay sorry guys um two they might uh yellow flag it and just dry the straightaway um something like like the where where the checkered uh checkered line is and then possibly the um, um, where the um, uh, where the pits are at, or three, the red flag it and try, try to dry everything they can, like as quick as they can, and like they'll probably have a time frame where they can like dry as much as they can, and then they'll go back green and it'll be a green track with some rain on it. I don't know. They'll, I think they'll try either one or two yellow flag it and dry some parts. Or green flag it, and but if they green flag it or yellow flag it, um, they'll definitely have to run the wipers, um, which goes into my next question: Are they going to have? Are they going to have uh, wipers on every single car this this at uh, Charlotte? Because it's sh um, at most tracks, um, like it's usually at the uh, road courses, they only have wipers on certain cars. So I'm guessing that. Um, if they're gonna have to, if they're gonna either green or yellow flag it, they're gonna have to have wipers on every single car that, you know, like, you know, I mean, so they can get the water off their windshield because they're not gonna be able to see very many, you know, so, um, I don't know, but, like I said, next wa race is going to be at Darlington, the Southern 500, woo! So, um, y'all know who my favorite driver is at the um, favorite driver who won the Southern 500. It's Tony Stewart. Oh, oh you guys, <laughs> I got a little hyper <laughs> over that, but yep. You know who else is getting hyper? Special guest, Buffalo. Buffalo, who's your favorite driver? Oh, he's definitely getting mad. I think it's Tony, right? Yep, it's Tony. So, better look out for those favorite paint schemes, those throwback paint schemes. After the Darlington, we go to Indianapolis to field the 16 drivers to the chase, the 2018 championship. And guess what, guys? Guess what? Stop. He's kind of getting annoying now. Go in the corner. Go in the corner now. He's getting cornered. He's getting cornered. He, and he's kind of screwing up my shirt. Okay. Okay. Guess who might not be going to the field of 16? <laughs> I call it the field of 16. I'll, I'll call it something else when we go to it. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll finish these, this thing out with Buffalo sitting right beside us. He is sitting beside us. I know this is a podcast, so you can't really see him, but Buffalo, the special guest, is definitely sitting right beside us. Okay. But, um, with four drivers outside of, well, not outside, but four drivers not locked in, not locked in within the 16 drivers, there's one of them that's not, and that is Johnson. Yes. Again, this year, he might not make it. And this is the first 
round, guys. Like, come on. Mike Johnson, he hasn't even won a race this year. Last year, I, I, I'm trying to think. I, I think he got into the first round. I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna go f forwards or backwards. I, I'm I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go like randomly. I think he, I'm gonna go backwards. He didn't get into the round the four championship four. And I don't think he got I don't think he got I think I don't think he got into like the eight. I think he got into the sixteen. And then from that on, where on, he got, he, oh my gosh, my, my, my co-host is gone crazy. My co-host is gone crazy. <laughs> but anyway, guys. See? Okay, guys. I'm gonna have to say in in this thing up. So my question for y'all, uh, you guys, is is Jimmy Johnson either going to win his way into the uh, champion, uh, win win his way into to the the field of 16, or uh, make it through points, or is he going to not and make his way? into the losing round and try to win a race post season that is my question for y'all today so what do you guys think he's going to do this year is he going to win a race this year because he still has time to win a race he has Darlington Indianapolis and then we go to Vegas to start the championship rounds So, what do you guys think, guys? What do you guys think? I want to hear your guys' th thoughts. I just personally don't think he's going to win a race this year. And I just don't see him winning. I definitely don't see him winning. Um, um, definitely don't, don't see him winning Darlington. Um, maybe Darlington, but definitely not seeing him winning um, Indianapolis. Last year, I believe Kyle Busch won Indy. So I see Kyle Busch possibly possibly winning Indy this year. Um, if we see a new uh, new uh, driver win um, win this year, um, yet this year is probably going to be at Darlington. Um, do, 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 do. I'm gonna I'm checking my playoffs real quick. Uh, my playoff standings real quick. Okay, we got four drivers above the cut line. They are Denny, Eric, Jimmy, and Alex. And then we got four, four below that have to make it in. Basically have to. Um, Ricky, Ryan, Daniel, and Paul. Menard, um, I'm going to go out for a win. If we are going to win, get a first-time winner, it's going to be Ricky. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to be... A first-time winner um, for um, for the um, Darlington Southern 500. That is my pick. I think, guys, don't hold me to that though. I just if we're go I said if we're going to get a first-time winner though, that's my key thing though, guys. If we're gonna get a first-time winner, um, I'm not gonna say if we get a reoccurring winner. So. That's my key thing, though, guys. Um, for Indianapolis, I don't see Johnson winning Indianapolis. If we're going to get a first-time winner, it's either going to be Denny Hamlin or Eric Almarola. If we get two winners, if we get two first-time winners, if we get two first-time winners, there's a very good chance that Johnson will not make it into the points. Or he won't make it into the points, and then obviously he won't make it through. Um, he won't make it through. Um, he won't make it through um, winning. If we get one first-time winner, it'll 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 be hard. If we get no first-time winners, 
like I said, it's going to be hard, guys. Um, so it's just we're, it's just going to kind of be a wait and see, guys, until any uh, post indie. Um, Jimmy Johnson just needed to work a lot harder this year, and he hasn't. So with um, about 30 minutes into this, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Like I said, guys, just Johnson needs to work on it, guys. He he hasn't done that this year, and um, he hasn't had very much good luck this year. I I'm not gonna say luck is all of it, but luck is all of it, but it's definitely most of it. And and um, with um all of these um, with all of these drivers that I see up top, the top three and the top three in points, Kevin, Kyle, Bush, and Martin Truex Jr., the top three and the top three in points, that's probably going to show you guys something. Kevin Harvick is top in points, Kyle Busch is second, and Martin Truex Jr. is in third, guys. And then look at, look, Clint Boyer is in fourth, guys. So... You know, that just shows you guys something right there. That, you know, you turn, you know, we we have top three in the top three. So, you know, it just, it kind of shows you guys something that the top three is in the top three. So, you, you know, guys, like, well, like, like I said, it, like, in that being said, um, you know, we're going to wrap things up. Um, keep, um... Keep um, Robert Wickens in your in in, in um in your prayers, whatever you, uh um in your thoughts, whatever you guys believe in. I'm uh, I will keep him in my thoughts. Keep, um, when we do go to Indy in a couple weeks, um, just think of him when we're in Indy too. Um, you know, and really, kind of, uh, whoever wins, um, um at Indy. Kind of listen to what, what what they do say, you know. In in, in the in the racing community, we're we're all kind of we're all kind of um we're all kind of a big family. So when we do go to Indy, you know that is their kind of home home turf. That the Verizon IndyCar series that is kind of their home turf. So when when we're at Indy, kind of listen to them and you know kind of listen to them. You know, I'm just, you know, just, it'll kind of, you, you'll kind of, if, if, if at the end of the race, the winner, it'll kind of prove something of the driver. If the driver talks about Robert, uh, Robert, you know, it'll pr kind of prove something about that driver. If that driver really, really cares about the sport or, you know, really doesn't, you know, you got some drivers out there really just drive for themselves and there's drivers that really drive for the sport you know that's why I I, I like the driver I am I write I the drivers I like you know my driver has a brother that really <laughs> you know drives the exact opposite as him I've never understood that I've never understood why you know he um, is how he is but you know but like I said there's there's drivers that drive for themselves and there's drivers that drive through the sport. And like I said, the r racing community is a whole community. So, like I said, with Buff, with Buffalo out on um, out on um, assignment now. I'm gonna I'm Patrick. And you guys have a great Southern 500. See you guys in the next one, and I might see you guys on the track.